I just want to take you back now to your time as a player at Arsenal, if I can. And um, I mean, a hugely successful period, era for the club, arguably the most successful era of the club's history. I mean, when you look back at your time at Arsenal, how how do you remember it? Is it the best time of your career? I mean, how, how do you remember your time at Arsenal? Well, that's amazing. It's amazing everything when I look back. Now, from my arrival, arrival at the club, when I came with David Dean to Austria, met Arsene and the other players in the preseason, until my last few days, you know, in the club. Or obviously, you know, when you are preparing to say goodbye, it's always hard. But uh, in between my arrival and my departure, it was full of joy. You know, um, something happened to me, especially considering my position, that I would never expect. For example, uh, score the goal, you know, the, the, the fastest goal in the Champions League by the time, and then uh, win the league unbeaten and um, scored the first Arsenal goal at any rate. Mm -hmm. This is something unique for, uh, for one player. Mm -hmm. you know, and I feel um, you know, fortunate for everything I achieved at Arsenal with this club, uh, full of good memories, um, where I learned a lot. I've learned so much the club, with the people, with uh, Arsenal family. You know, it's a kind of a feeling you never forget, you know, you always keep on your heart. I saw your uh, conversation with Lauren on Twitter this week. Um, he was talking about the way Arsenal trained. And uh, I think the first set, after seeing the first session, you never, ever went to a training session without your shin pads ever again. <laughs> was, that, was that true? And can you tell us what were those training sessions like? How intense were they? Arsenal training session was so intense, you know. I, I believe this what made us invincible. At that time, because of that type of mentality, uh, the, the, the way we train was not different from the games. And uh, many times, some training session was even harder than the many play games we played. And that uh, was more difficult because, you know, we never spoke of any challenge. None of the players, <laughs> everyone was there. <laughs> Sometimes it was like, it was quite scary. And um, me, I was quite used to, to train here in Brazil with the shin pads, you know. But uh, I saw a few couple of times that the, the players didn't have that. I tried once to, to be, but I, I was not comfortable. But then, see the way everyone was training. I was, you know, I was not prepared to be without it. And I always kept my shin pads on. You know, this is um, the way I always prepare for, for the games. You know, I was trained the way I was going to, to the games, you know, with my equipment uh, read for every battle. In, in the train, every training session was a big battle because mm -hmm. you have to be on your top, not only in the games, you have to be on your top in the training session because it was there where everything starts for us where we, we got prepared for the games, for every battle, where Arsene would uh, trust with kind of players you could count in, in every game. Mm -hmm. This, you know, for me, without the Shinpej was not something safe. <laughs> <laughs> you, you also spoke in that conversation with Lauren about a moment of Jens, Jens screaming at Martin Keown over over something. Can you let us into some little sort of secrets of exactly sometimes when things did spill over a little bit in training i mean what did what did yens do a, a, any sort of incidents like that which kind of summed up just how intense arsenal training sessions were as i mentioned you know, the the intention of the training session was always there uh, every day you know and uh martin was always talkative in the, in the training session he always talked you know uh help the others and uh, yens many times screaming from the back, you know, to some of the players, oh, position here, there, da, da, da. I remember once he told something to, to Cherry to come and mark somebody. 
and Thierry Ziens, stop, <laughs> stop, you know, not, not at this time, you know, it's too early in the training session. And, uh, but at the end of the day, you know, we end up and laugh, laughing about it, about this incident, because um, this was the type of mentality, you know, everyone had. And uh, Jens, with the way he, he thinks, you now always focus in the, from the beginning, from the, when he, he arrived in the, in the dressing room, Jens was a different type of player. You know, his mood was focused in the training session and uh, going to, to the field, you know, always uh, red. He was doing what he always did, I, I guess, you know, and with uh, the focus we had to be for the games. The training session was the same. Yeah. You know, if he could uh, push somebody in the training session, when somebody was around him for the corner, he would do that. Because, as you may have seen in the in the games, it was the same. Because some players will try to to make him angry, and he always push somebody back. Yeah, he never uh, he never backed down, did he? Lauren Lauren has given a really interesting interview uh, last year, I think it was, when he talked about when it, him and Thierry squared up and had a bit of a fight in training. Obviously, they made up made up afterwards. Did you remember seeing things like that? And uh, did it ever sort of shock you or did, was it just things that happen sometimes in training when you've got players of that mentality that just wanted to win? I don't know if I was there at this time, at this day, training. But um, yeah, obviously, I, 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 I listened to the comments later on. Afterwards, you know, the incident, everyone, you know, start laughing and, uh, and make funny on each other. You know, especially who was not involved in the situation. Mm. Hey, why? Wh what's that? What's that? You know, just make try to pretend uh, to make uh, make fun on each other. But I, I think the mentality was there. You know, I, this was. I think this team uh, we had was like uh, one defend each other. You know, of course, in the, every training session was really hard, but but. If we went to the game, we had one of the players had a problem with the opponent, the other would come mm -hmm. to help. Now one protect each other. Obviously, sometime in you know, the training session, some ugly tackles arrive and uh, happen, and some arguments. But uh, in the end of the day, everyone respect each other mm -hmm. and uh, talk in the dressing room and. Uh, Came back to peace. Yeah. What did it, what, what was Arsene like during training? Did he just watch watch all this? I mean, I bet I can imagine if you're a manager of a team who are flying in for tackles like that, you'd you'd be watching it like this, wouldn't you? You 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 wouldn't want to see your tip, your one of your players injured before a, before a big match. What was he like? Was he just very calm and uh, and just yeah, sort of stayed out of it all? Yeah, he was calm normally, you know, unless if he. If he sees that um, somebody was over what is was necessary, mm -hmm. um, you know, for the tackling or if, you know, change the, the, the mentality, the temper, and uh, he was there, try just to you know, he never came. Hey, stop tackling! He never came like this. You know, we just say, oh, be careful, you know, just just to avoid injury. But uh, at some occasion where there was some argument, he just stay. Uh, away from the argument and uh, wait for the result you know if the players would stop or not but um I, this was the way we have to let some time behave in the game because in the game you, you cannot ask uh, please sometimes you have to be hard on your teammates hey come on i need you uh, you know I, we have to be hard on them yeah. Obviously, you know, some type of arguments we we may had in the training, some training session, I think was important for, for us to get mature, to go to the battles on, in the games, mm -hmm. you know, because in the end of the, game, the day, everyone was a friend. Despite we had, uh, I remember once, um, Kola Ture and um, Pascal Sigan, they fought, they fought in, the, in the training session. You know, they, they start to have a kind of argument 
in the training session, one hit the other. But uh, in the end of the day, they start, you know, a small fight and we came and uh, stopped. And I'll send, send them to the dressing room. I say, oh, this is not good. <laughs> because they fight inside. <laughs> you know, and uh, they, they left the training session, stay away, stay, stay on the side. And on the sat around the field to watch the rest of the training session was nearly to the end. And um, when I arrived in the dressing room, they was laughing on each other, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, Arsene always used his command, his leadership, just to calm down the situation. But uh, the players understood that they made a mistake in the training session, you know, and apologized for, on each other. This was uh, the, the mentality, you know? We, we may, may have a problem in the, in, uh, in the training session, but we solve the problem before we go home. Did you ever see, I mean, Arsene was so calm always. He, he certainly was in front of the cameras. Do you ever remember an occasion where he surprised you, where he just completely lost it or something, whether it be at training or at half time, at full time of a match? Was there any ever occasion where you would like, wow, <laughs> I've not seen Arsene do this before? Or was he always that calm, mild manager that we, that we saw in front of the cameras? Uh, I've, not many times, but uh, a few occasions where in the half time he came very pissed with us, the way we had our first half. I don't remember exactly which game, but if I'm not wrong, I don't know if it was uh, against Liverpool in, at Highbury when I think it was 2-0 two, two up for them for the half time. And uh, we, we won that game, I think, I don't know, it's for 5-3, 5-2, whatever, or 4-2. He, he was very upset, you know. And uh, there was a few other occasions, no? In the, in the half time, he came and, <laughs> and uh, hit the, the board a bit hard. And uh, even though when Arsenal was angry, we could not see him, you know, as this type of uh, person who lost his his mind. Mm -hmm. But uh, he provoked us, you know, and the way, you know, of, we knew he was upset, of course. We could see on his face. Uh, and we have to gi give the answer back on the field. And this was one thing we had in mind. Yeah. When you look back at your time at Arsenal, do you have now any regrets about it at all? Or was it all... Just happy memories. No, no regrets. Maybe it could be more patient to stay in my last season because um, my last season I didn't play much. And uh, this was very disappointed for me. I was frustrated of not being played because I knew I had the uh, quality to play. I knew that I had condition. And at that time, Austin uh, chose Flamini to play with Fabregas. And, um, you know, I was seeing that um, maybe my time was become, uh, was coming to an end in the club because I was not having much opportunity. Mm -hmm. When I left, I had one more year contract. Maybe I should have stayed because after that, Flamini left uh, free, for free. Mm -hmm. And... Um, since then, you know, um, I've seen that Arsenal struggled to, to find another play in that position. And uh, maybe if I may say something about regret, possibly could be uh, this, you know, uh, non-patience to, to stay. But I have my reasons and um, I was so happy, you know, when I moved to Greece, you know, I had the other, the, the other hand, I was uh, okay with, uh, with the change I have made because uh, I went to Greece to Panathinaikos for three years. You know, I was very happy there. You know, the fans treated me well. I had a, you know, a good time. Uh, I kept enjoying football and enjoy with the family, lifestyle, and um, enjoy football, you know, basically. That, that season, you talked about your last season, 2007, 2008, that must have been a strange season for you, like you said, because you kind of weren't playing as much. Flamini was 
in with Sesk in that midfield. And, you know, Arsenal were really going for the title that season, weren't they? It looked for a long period like they might well win the league that season. So it must have been, yeah, like you said, it must have been quite difficult to kind of watch on at that point when, uh, you know, things until, what, February, March were, were going so well. It must have been pretty difficult, that. Yeah, it was in school because um, in the in fifth season at the club, you know, I always came back late for the preseason uh, because of the national team. And this season, this last season was the same. I came back late. And uh, after I was ready to play, you know, I, I seen that um, I was not getting my opportunity. Mm-hmm. Then I spoke to Austin and uh, he explained me the reason. But uh, I was not not so happy at all of uh, watching the games on the bench. But I respect all of them because they were doing well. You know, Ma, uh, Flamini and, and Cesc, they were playing so well. And uh, But despite that, you know, it was hard. And um, But uh, I think this football, we have to, to accept when things does not go... Uh, you know, somehow to accept, even though it was hard for me, but I, I try to all my best, and I did all my best to to support the team. Um, if I play one minute, ten minutes, uh, one game, one full game, doesn't matter. The important for me was to be there and uh, not be a problem mm-hmm. because I was on the bench, but be somebody. Uh, ready to help at any time. Yeah. Do you look back on that that season, that Birmingham game, obviously the Eduardo incident, the penalty at the end, I think you'd just come on just before the penalty was given away. You were on the pitch, weren't you, for the last few minutes of that game. Do you look back at that Birmingham game and think, had Arsenal won that match, that team would have gone on to win the title? Because it just seems such a pivotal moment of the season, that, that last minute when the penalty went in. Yeah, it was tough, you know, the, the incident with uh, Eduardo was so tough, I think, for, for everybody. Mm-hmm. I was on the bench, I came on just to help take him off the field because he didn't speak uh, good English by the time. And um, I think uh, the team destabilized from that moment. And uh, somehow, you know, the I don't know if uh, was something missing, some ingredients missing to, to make things happen, you know, and, um, and then uh, we, we could not uh, get the result we expect. And since then, you know, the team became not so good. Mm-hmm. Everyone points to that, the William Gallas' reaction. He was obviously captain then. You, you had, I think you, it was kind of between you and William to be captain that season, wasn't it? And it went to William. Did, I mean, was that for you a senior professional? What was that that Gallas reaction like? Do you look at that as well as a as a key moment of that season where the sort of dressing room never really covered from seeing the captain do something like that? Well, listen, uh, I we we don't expect that you know from the captain. Mm-hmm. I I have a you know a very good a great respect for for William and uh, as a person as a professional. Uh, his attitude in that moment was not the best, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, Austin uh, told him to stop in the dress room because he was, uh, you know, I spoke to him, hey, stop, you know, it's not time now. And, um, and then we, everyone calmed down. But um, I think this time, you know, this type of leadership, you know, is so important to uh, give uh, the others the support they need because we were on a fragile moment where we lost one player with a very bad injury. You know, the result was not so good. It's a, it's a moment where we have to embrace everyone and uh, look for the next one. And, uh, and it, you know, here, I don't know in, in England, but in Brazil, we, we have a say that we have to wash the dirt clothes at home. And uh, I think this would what we should have done on that day, you know, take all the mistake and not speak there, yeah. not uh, put them out, 
but uh, during the week, speaking in, the, in the, the training session, see what went wrong and correct for the next couple of games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember speaking to Justin Hoyt, who was, I think he was on the bench with you actually that game. He, he wasn't playing, he was on the bench. And um, he, he spoke about that and said it was a really, it was a really key moment. And he just felt like things were a little bit different after that because of what had gone on on the pitch in the dressing room afterwards it was just it was tough to recover from uh, at that point for what was a young team as well a young squad yeah it was because of that you know when we have a young team and um, that's why the senior players has, has to be uh, the role model for them you know the one to give them the support you know uh, i think it was a, a tough learning process to everyone Mm -hmm. because we miss a, a great opportunity yeah i think everyone looks back at that season as such a it was so close wasn't it it was so close to all lining up and, yeah. and, and winning it but not quite